everybody. It's uh, February 19th around 12 noon. There's Lviv's biggest university, Ivan Franko University. There's the park and the monuments to Ivan Franko, that Ukrainian communist who for some stupid reason is a national hero. He's a national hero because he wanted to create a Ukrainian communism instead of uh, independent from Moscow's communism. So that's why the Soviets tolerated that uh, Soviet-style monument of him. In fact, promoted it and kind of hid his more nationalist ideas. So a lot of violence in Ukraine yesterday. Um, I was showing the university because I wanted to point out that this is this is the the middle of the city. Look at that beautiful sculpture. Uh, much of the city was built while under Austrian rule and while under Polish rule. Um, and I believe in 1939 it was only 25% Ukrainian, though the countryside surrounding it was all Ukrainian. But now, uh, now Lviv is the uh, the Soviets chased out all the Poles and it has since become uh, the center of Ukrainian nationalism. So here I'm coming up on uh, I think the prosecutor's office. So while the real big violence was in Kiev last night, here in Lviv, um, it says Slava Ukraini, Glory to Ukraine, have smashed windows. Um, while the real big violence was in Kiev, I think 25 people were killed. Here in Lviv, there was uh, they tried to blockade the military barracks. Uh, one of the big military barracks is in near Lviv perhaps for the same reason that American military bases are in the south, it's to keep the revolutionaries down. <clears throat> There's a big barricade. Okay, so last night there was violence in the military barracks because uh, protesters wanted to stop reinforcements from going to Kiev and they succeeded. And then there was violence here. Um, the violence here, they overran the prosecutor's office and the police station and they freed all the criminals. I think they freed all kinds of criminals regardless of who they were. And they burned all the files probably because they were like, they were afraid that people were tracking the criminals. So this is right in the center of, uh, of the city. Mir Khatam. I'm not sure what that means. Vina Palatsam. War palaces? I call myself fluent in Ukrainian, though sometimes that assertion is challenged. There's the monument of St. George, which is sort of a monument to the police. You can see all the violent, all the, this happened last night. <clears throat> but you can see there's still a big crowd here. It looks like there are protesters guarding the entrance. Let's see if we can get a look. There's more burning files. Uh, we can't... We can't learn while they're killing people probably written by students. Like most uh, revolutionary movements, this is driven largely by the enthusiasm of youth. <clears throat> so what do I know? 25 people killed in Kiev, including some police. Here in Lviv, the military barracks. First they were blocking the convoy, then there was a stone and Molotov cocktail throwing contest between soldiers and and protesters here in Lviv and in the end the protesters overran the military barracks and burned them <laughs> uh, and then here they also overran the prison and the 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 police center and the prosecutor's office earlier earlier they had overrun the oblast like the the state government center but Let's take a look at this monument, because this is pretty funny. Okay, so this is a monument to the police, but 
it was sort of remade, so St. George, they should have put a bandana around his face, but regardless, St. George is waving a Ukrainian flag, which is a symbol of the protests, and the snake is in fact the police. That's pretty funny. The reason the Ukrainian flag is a symbol of the protests is because the government is uh, very Russophile and partly ethnically Russian, so it may confuse some Western observers, like why are the you know, what's the point of protesters singing the anthem or waving flags, or why do they see, like, the riot police tearing down Ukrainian flags? Isn't that their own symbol? But, but no, the, the protesters are, are more nationalist and the government is more Russophile. So, that's kind of crazy. <clears throat> see, this is, this is the city center more fires and barricades there. Pretty primitive barricades compared to the ones in Kiev. I made a video of them a few weeks ago. Crazy, crazy times. But let's flip this around. Okay, so uh, what else do I know? Oh yeah, one of the things that really bothered me about last night's protests like, of course, it's a big tragedy when people die, but for some reason I keep thinking of that armored vehicle. Um, it was an armored vehicle that went up to the barricades to try to, like, knock them over or puncture them, and it got a whole bunch of uh, Molotov cocktails thrown onto it, and I don't know if it had been prepared with the fuel, but it just went up in flames. And uh, I hear reports that there were people, there were police officers, not just the driver, the other cops inside, and, and they all burned to death. I also saw a video of somebody, of a police officer looking guy, retreating from that. So maybe it's not true, maybe they survived, but regardless, that just made me really angry. <laughs> not for any good reason. Uh, in, not for any good reason that I'm thinking about this more than the other protesters who were killed, or, or protesters who were killed, but... Uh, but I can imagine the military decision being made. I can imagine the stupid, cowardly commander just telling his soldiers, yeah, just go do this. You know, again and again in military history, um, infantry, or armor needs infantry support. Armor needs infantry support to keep guys off your tanks. This has happened so many times in military history. And um, I can just imagine a stupid, cowardly commander sending those soldiers off to get killed. Alright, anyway, let's keep going a little bit. So, right now there's no government in, in Lviv at all. Wait, that's not true. The mayor's office is probably still running because, like, the mayor is completely sympathetic with the protesters. Well, that's a pretty lame barricade. Dirt and broken pots. But there's little government. I think the police have all been scattered and have all run. And I just want to walk a little further with you to the actual city center here. Um, what I call, like the very epicenter of the city, which is Independence Street, Prospect Svoboda. <sighs> so the violence in Kiev, as I understand it, it, it started because there was a session in the, in like the, the Ukrainian Congress. Whoops. Hang on a second. Okay, so the, there was a session in the Ukraine. A lot of the protesters uh, marched, like, in an organized group out of the protest camps a few blocks further up Rushevskoha. They went out of their barricaded encampment a few blocks further to try to disrupt this session of Congress. And uh, that's where they started shooting protesters. And then uh, all hell broke loose. Well, not all hell, I mean could be much worse. Uh, I also did see that the... Oh, other people said that they, like, the police did that intentionally, like they knew the protesters would leave the camp. So as soon as they left, 
they attacked them, you know, near the Congress, and at the same time, they went and tried to dismantle some of the barricades, and I think they succeeded. I saw one video uh, of Khrushchevskoho Street, where, where I was standing myself a couple weeks ago when I went to check it out, but the, the barricades were no longer there. So if you look at my previous video, uh, like those bat, like where I was standing, where I was taking that video among the barricades, I think they were taken down amid the violence last night in Kiev. All right, so check this out. This is the actual city center, like the very, very center of the city. Uh, where we were earlier was down that street. Oh, it's Nyatuka Street. Oh, darn it, and I sh really should have done something. We think Ludwig von Mises was born down this street. <laughs> So I think I just walk past his flag. Ludwig von Mises was born on this street and I was involved in uh, searching archives to try to pinpoint what building he was born in. And I actually walked right past his plaque, which uh, was the fruit of all that research that we did. Um, it was actually my friends who concluded the research. My my queries were all unsuccessful. Anyway, I'm backtracking now. Uh, it's just <clears throat> so we knew that that Mises's uh, great grandfather and great uncle owned a couple buildings like right on the city square on Staro Evreshka Street, Old Jewish Street. Um, and on the and on the central square. But uh, but we found out the address where his father lived when he was born and it was right here. And I walked right past it without showing it to my readers, to my viewers. So let's back up. Okay. Yep, there it is. <laughs> let's see, I'm at 12 minutes video. I wonder if I should edit out this walk, this backtrack. Okay, anyway, there was there where the police station was. You can see the smoke a little bit. And over here, Nyatuka Street, number 13. Who do you see smiling down at you? But the face of Ludwig von Mises economist and liberal thinker was born in this building. Well, what we know is this was where his father lived when he was born, so we assume this was his earliest childhood. September 29th, 1881. And boy, could Ukraine use some of his ideas. I, uh, I actually angered some of my Ukrainian friends early on when these protests were about joining the EU. They were about joining the EU initially, but that changed very quickly. Now they're about deposing a hideously corrupt regime. But uh, early on, I, I wrote an essay about why I'm against Ukraine joining the EU, and you should be too, and it offended many people, but I think influenced some others. So since then, I've been doing what little I could to introduce ideas about uh, local autonomy, the right to self-defense, and competing currencies. Uh, I was actually on television, though not, not on a very popular program. Uh, but yeah, but it was good conversation, and uh, I was invited back for a second appearance, and, and uh, I don't know, that's what Ukraine needs. I don't know how to convince people, but I do know how to limit corruption. Alright, 
So now we're walking this street a third time. Nyatuka Street. So what we're about to see uh, <clears throat> what we're about to see is uh, Independence Street and here there's been sort of a permanent protest with tents and a stage and a sound system and uh, and there's been a permanent protest for a few months they're always just showing news sometimes there's music sometimes there's uh, speeches <sighs> At least it's a little warmer. Winter kind of ended last weekend when I visited when I visited my Don a couple weeks ago. Temperatures reached minus 17 degrees Celsius. So you might be able to see that monument kind of coming up like a wave on the left and to the right there's a poet that is national nationalist na national hero Taras Shevchenko. He's a poet. He wrote a lot about slavery or, or feudalism, uh, which ironically ended, uh, ended in uh, 1861, about two weeks after his death. But he made his literary career writing about Ukrainian identity and, and feudalism, Polish and, and, and Russian. Polish had ended in 1848, but Russian feudalism ended with a declaration in 1861. Yeah. So, there are no cops in Lviv uh, at all. <laughs> yeah, somehow everything is fine. I had coffee earlier. I'm gonna have coffee again and my phone is the battery's about to die so but I think I covered what I want to cover uh, there's a Statue of Liberty looking figure on that building and she's sitting and the joke is that when Ukraine became independent she stood up but then after she took a look at Ukrainian politics she decided to sit back down However, I like what's going on. I hope if it, if it goes in the right direction, maybe she'll stand up again. Thanks for watching. Bye.